Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Autumn here and honestly, today's episode is going to be a little bit different, a little emotional. As you guys know, on my channel, I post a lot about my Ford vehicles and racing and like the Barnuminium and a lot of stuff that's going on in my life. And I haven't talked a ton about drag racing yet on my channel. I'm really excited because I'm building a new drag car and I will definitely do a walk around on it. I promise, promise, promise. So many of you have been waiting for updates. I post a lot on my Facebook and my Instagram and my TikTok, but I have not introduced my drag car to my YouTube really yet. This video, as you can tell from the title, is all about my drag racing accident that I was in. And I am posting it today. Uh, it is the day that the accident happened last year. Um, so it's been a full year since my um, crazy accident and um, honestly it's still very traumatic. It's still very fresh. Uh, so like I said it's gonna be a little... I might cry a little bit but it's okay. Background on the accident. So my previous race car um, was a uh, 1989 uh, Fox Body Mustang hatchback. Uh, smoke gray. I had a built coyote with a, a supercharger on top and I was running the NMRA NMCA 860 class and a year ago it was Rockingham, uh, North Carolina. Um, it's still crazy because like when people ask me about this like I remember everything to a T. A very freak accident where you know I, I did a, a a to B run and as soon as I hit the you know the finish line tap the brakes like I normally would do the you know the car didn't do anything different um, or feel uncomfortable and it was actually to back up it was the very first um, it was the very first run that I was doing in the car that day it was test in tune the event hasn't started qualifying eliminations nothing like it was literally just test in tune Watching it's super emotional because like, you know, I was just testing it out. I had a new shifter. I was really excited. I was in North Carolina racing for the first time. Um, and, you know, everything happens for a reason. So sharing with you guys the video. And I just want to say that, yes, it's been a year, but it's still so fresh. And I will still continue to talk about it. I know some people have unfriended me, un, you know, unfollowed me, whatever, but safety equipment is so, so important. My car was built with a better cage than what I needed. You know, I had a head-to-toe safety gear. I had a Hans device. I had, you know, safety was kind of like an overkill. Like, I had almost too much than what I needed, but um, in that sense, it's like, my car did an A to B run, and as soon as I hit the, the brakes, one of the wheels locked up and, you know, shot me over to the wall, and I rolled three times at, you know, 160 miles per hour. Or, like, as soon as the car started, like, tilting for the first roll, my body kind of, like, just froze, and I relaxed, but in a weird way, like, I passed out. Um... And when I came to, it's when I was upright and the safety crew was like making sure I was conscious. They couldn't get my door open. Um, the firefighter crew had to like pull me through my windshield and I was just standing there like hyperventilating like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I remember the look on like my dad's face when he got to the end of the track and like saw me and like you know, all I could say to him was like, Dad, I'm sorry. 
And he's like, my baby girl's okay. Like, why are you sorry? And I just remember the look was just like, I'll never forget that face. Um, and like my, my boyfriend was with us, Chris, and he almost didn't come to the track that, that weekend. Um, but he decided to, cause he was on a work trip and he ended up flying into the local airport and got a rental car and stuff. And, um, like I said, everything happens for a reason because like him not coming would have been crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just remember all their faces at the end of the track and, you know, everyone's face and everyone was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, I watched them, you know, use the fire extinguishers on my car and I was very like, I was in it, but out of it, you know, and if kind of funny is like I go into the ambulance because they just wanted to check my heart rate and make sure I was okay and I like you know they're asking me like spell your name you know say your phone number what's your address things like that to make sure I didn't hit my head and um I'm just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I was talking really really fast and uh the guy was just like looking at me like she's okay like she's fine and um, I was like, I remember sitting in the ambulance and I was talking to everybody and I was very like, like, whew, like trying to catch my breath and trying to like, you know, come to because I, I literally just passed out and rolled a car at 160 miles per hour. So no one's like perfectly okay. And I'm just sitting there like crying and I'm like, I think I cut my leg and they're all instantly like, oh my gosh, what do you mean you cut your leg? And I roll up my race suit pant leg and there's like this tiny little cut on my knee and they all kind of laughed and was like, oh, well, do you want a little band-aid for that? <laughs> and I was like, actually, yeah, I'd love a band-aid. <laughs> so another funny thing was like, I keep my phone like in the car and I take videos and of course that one pass, I didn't take a video with my phone, but um, I was like, oh my gosh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Not really caring, but I was just like, you know, I just got an accident. You know, my mom's going to call me. Like, my family's going to call me. Like, my Apple Watch was on my wrist. And when the accident happened, my Apple Watch instantly called 911. And there was, like, police and, you know, emergency crew, like, looking for me at the gate of the track. And I hear on the radio when I'm in the ambulance, like, hey, like, like, someone called, like, someone called for Autumn. Like, they're looking for Autumn. And it was because my Apple Watch like called. And so if you get a car accident and you have an Apple Watch on, 90% of the time you're it's gonna notify the police before you can. So just so you know. It's so crazy to look back at the videos of my car and like how my safety equipment, my cage, like saved my life. Like it it it's sad, but like Fox bodies aren't built perfect, you know, no car is built perfect. And so the actual frame of a fox body is very flimsy. Like you can see kind of on the, the roof in that video that it was kind of caving in. Um, you know, looking forward, um, it's like looking forward, it, it brought a lot of, you know, it opened a lot of doors. Uh, when the accident, after the accident, you know, I started talking on, you know, uh, online and podcast and um, you know, going up into the tower to talk about safety and Simpson uh, racing equipment actually reached out and they were like, hey, like, let's let's get you all new gear head to toe. Um, I joined the Holly performance, you know, program and they're helping me build my next race car to get me back to the track. So they post a little bit about me and they post like my helmet and I'm working on my new custom race suit with them. So like I said, like it's crazy that it happened, but there's also so many doors that it opened at the same time. And it's, it's like, it's hard to explain to people because they're like, how can you be okay with it happening? But like, how could I not be okay? You know, when I got out of the ambulance, they were like, do you want to go to the hospital? What do you want to do? And I wanted to just see my car and I wanted to be at the track for a little bit longer. And um, the tech um, crew at the track took my car on a flatbed and they brought it over to the tent. And I mean, there's cars getting 
tucked in to that are just getting to the track and then they see my car on this flatbed and everyone's taking videos and pictures and my car you know is on this flatbed and they were going through everything and I explained you know exactly what happened of like one wheel locking up and then they just pulled it to the side and I didn't know if something broke in the rear end and you know I didn't pull my parachute and you know they were like well how did this happen how did this happen and I tell them everything and they look through the car and they look at the track like the skid marks on the track from you know the wheel locking up and they were like her story lines up she touched the brakes and literally the there's a big line for on the driver's side of my rear tire locking and no other tire marks were on the other side yet so it literally locked and just went doop. and then obviously there's tire marks you know when i started turning but from the straight line it there were tire marks and it's like the tech and like the track officials were like autumn like yeah you did everything you could because <laughs> it's like what there was nothing else i would have done after I saw my car, saw it on the flatbed, uh, I went to the hospital and I had the best nurse <laughs> at the hospital. I am not a, I don't like needles, I don't like the hospital and they had me get a scan head to toe to make sure I was okay and you know I walked in there, signed all the papers and talked to them and was like hey like I was just in a car accident at the local racetrack and these nurses like are, you know they've been dealing with people that are like oh I'm sick, <laughs> like you know, and then I walk in and I'm like, yeah, so I'm, here's my insurance card and here's all my info. And they're like getting a wheelchair, getting a stretcher, like they're freaking out in the hospital room. I, I put my phone to the side cause I just couldn't handle it. And, um, Chris was with me and someone posted that like my car was wrecked. So social media has just started blowing up. I mean, absolutely blowing up that day everyone sharing the car and sharing it on Facebook and Instagram and it was just like insane but and then after we got out of the hospital my scans were good you know we get checked out um I actually got to educate the nurses about like my helmet and my Hans I brought that in to have them look at it and like the doctor looked at it and they were like like explain like I explained to them like the difference between different Hans devices and you know how they you know strap in and everything and um so yeah, so that, that was great to educate them because they have a local track uh, in, in Rockingham. But anyways, I leave there and I'm sore as can be. Bruising was insane because of the harness and um, it, took a, it took a while to recover from that. Like I was laying in bed, I had headaches, you know, I was not good. Um, obviously we're here a year later. I don't wanna you know say that I'm not doing better, but I definitely am doing a lot better. I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys my next race car. I'm really looking forward to getting back to the track eventually. I'm really looking forward to continuing to educate others on safety equipment and building my car to be super, super safe so that if anything happened again, um, I will be okay. And um, so yeah, I, sharing my story with you guys. I'm very vulnerable, obviously. I'm sharing everything with you guys. So um, I hope this helps. I'm sorry that I have to show my videos, but I'm showing you guys the videos of my car. And please, you know, like, subscribe, comment below your thoughts, how you feel. If you have questions about safety equipment as well, please reach out because I'm happy to help with anything. Um, but please stay safe out there if you're a driver. If you have a family member that's a racer, you know, show them this video, tell them to be safe, give your loved ones an extra hug, and um, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting.